thanks for joining us today. Let me introduce our Ben Hansel. Uh, he works for Blue Sky Online School, which facilitates grade 7 to 12, all online charity school. He has a model experience of six to seven years, and we are very much looking forward for your presentation, Ben. Thanks again. Here you go. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here at, at this time of night over here. Uh, what, what led me here was uh, a fascination, uh, not only with Moodle, but with, with reporting and being able to, to help gather data that was going to be, be influential for, for teachers and other faculty at my school to a uh, better system with their workflows so they could do their job better, make it through uh, tasks in, in a more fluid manner. So part of that includes making click reports, basically a report that you click on that would better lead you to the assessments the student has completed. So you can find this presentation here. If you want to go check it out, here's a Google, Google link. Um, another picture of me, uh, a little bit about me. I'm, I'm a very random person. If you ever happen to meet me in person, I have a hard time staying on topic and we'll be happy to talk about just this, that, and every other thing besides enjoying making reports a lot. And please feel free to contact me at the, the information listed if you have any questions. So this presentation will, will lead us through a little bit about how to make uh, reports using a, a plugin called Configurable Reports. So this presentation will, will get down to how to utilize pre-created report. In other words, uh, if you, you go to this link, it's uh, using the, the ad hoc uh, reports that, that Moodle has put out there. I've, I've uh, put a few out in that and how to add filters and permissions to reports. Another useful figure, um, a little bit different than AdMiter, you can actually create reports that can be accessed by a certain role or even a unique person within your Moodle. Unfortunately, I can't say that I authored this, this plugin. It's really nice, but uh, there is a, a wonderful uh, rock star, uh, one who made this across Quan. So uh, much kudos to him to say uh, thank you. is figuring out, figuring out what data is useful to you. And I've made reports for different kinds of, of uh, people and uh, you can just put everything into a report and it can have a lot of uh, data that you, you don't need and that's not really useful. So you really have to target and find that finite data and organize it in such a manner that it's gonna be really useful to you and to the specific roles that need it so they can get right to the, the, the precise points that they need. Uh, I've made reports for people where it's just they, they never use it or it's not something useful and it just becomes white noise. So unless you can help uh, as an administrator or, or fellow teacher, you can help target that data that somebody needs. Uh, you, it's, it's not useful. So try to make it uh, more than just white noise. So what's different between, if, I don't know if any of you, you know, chime up in, in into the chat and say something. I don't know if any of you have used one or the other or both of these two different plugins. Uh, but the, the configurable reports is a little bit different than the add minor plugin in some, some ways. The re configurable reports can be filtered. Permissions can be applied so that you could have them uh, accessible by certain roles. You say you could have a Moodle admin report only or you could have them directed to a teacher or even a student role if you want to create some uh, student dashboard that we can talk about later. I'm glad to hear that some of you guys have used both. One thing that I really like about the configurable reports block is that you can make concatenated URL strings so you can essentially target a specific uh, thing that you want the, the, the person clicking to the report to, to be able to click on and say, oh, I want to be able to click on that, that link, the outcome of the report, and then get right to something that needs grading. And it is possible, even though I, I've primarily authored SQL reports, it is possible to create reports without using SQL as well. So one of the, the nice things about uh, configurable reports in Moodle is there's been a lot of nice people out there that have contributed reports that they've created and shared them on the Moodle ad hoc reports page so that you don't have to start from scratch and making something new. 
oftentimes in a unique niche, you might find that you kind of need to do that. But I would go on, on that page and just look around and find something you might surprise yourself and figure out, hey, there's something there that I can use as a starting block. So what really spawned using this for our institution was making grading quicker, uh, or in some cases filling in the gaps where uh, a pre-existing grading block or plugin just wasn't doing the trick exactly. Uh, and I would really encourage you to check out uh, the Grade Everything, Grade Everything and some other reports I've shared on the Moodle ad, uh, ad hoc pages because your teachers will love you. They'll say, oh, this is so, so much quicker. One of the reasons I made this too for our teachers to be able to, to click to grade many things is that our all online institution, we have uh, somewhat of an at-risk population enrolling enrollment. We'll have people come and go. So some students are more asynchronous and are not there precisely at the beginning of a term. Uh, so people are starting at different places in your curriculum. Uh, one person may be towards the end, one person's at the beginning, and you, you don't have necessarily a strong sequence. Look in a course and see all of the activities that have been submitted and click to grade each of those makes it a little bit more streamlined than having to check each and every activity for items that might need to be graded. So some examples of some different reports that are out there, ones that I've created include uh, some teacher grading reports, student activity, and you can find a lot of other reports in the Moodle Ad Hoc rep Contributed Reports pages, such as the All Site Users is a good one, the student count in each course, you can get a, a figure on who all is in each of your courses, get a count. There are many, many more reports. I would highly encourage you to check that page out. So what does this look like? You can actually name your configurable reports plugin to be what you wish because it's primarily used for grading in our, uh, our school. Uh, I named it BS grading for blue sky. It was a little inside joke too, just because it only is accessible by teachers and students don't see it. So I thought I'd name it something silly. Um, but as you can see, we have one that targets grading everything as well as targeting uh, the different unique kind of activities that our school uses. We don't happen to use SCORM. I've been asked if uh, uh, you could grade SCORM with this as well too. That's one of the reasons that I, I created a, a SQL report for this too is because even though we don't, you could easily uh, target additional activities that you wish to grade and just add on to these reports. So what does it look like when you click into one? Uh, you can see that there are all these different tabs of how you might alter, manage, and edit uh, the report. But this is the, the output that you'll see uh, if you're an an admin, a teacher won't won't see all of this, uh, the tabs at the top, but they'll still see this output right here. If we take a closer look, it looks a little more like this. You can see a couple students, and this is uh, both they're both quizzes that have been submitted in the ungraded quiz report. And teacher would simply click the grade link, and then would bring right to an instance of where they could grade the essay responses each of those students have submitted. So let's take a look at what this looks like uh, in, in our production model, shall we? Give me just a moment while I, I tell uh, Moodle to remember that, or uh, that I, I want to share my screen and, and to remember that plugin. Uh, can you all confirm once you can see my screen? Can you see my screen now or just say yes or hoorah or something in the chat? <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Priya. Over here, I have uh, an instance of uh, this. This is the grade everything report. So it actually looks at multiple assessments all at once in our production Moodle environment. So here, if I, I'll just refresh this to make sure that, that I have a fresh shot at this. This is contextualized, so it's actually only looking at any assessments that have been submitted for students, uh, for courses that I'm a teacher of. So I've, I've set it so it'll actually grab not just this test course, but if I was a teacher in 
Um, any one of these other courses would also grab any activities that have been submitted there as well to any course that I'm a teacher of. And you can see it's getting multiple things. Uh, if some of you are familiar with the FN marking block or other different kinds of marking plugins, another reason we, we created this was so that we could catch things like journals or lessons, things that previously weren't caught by other marking blocks. So I can click to grade one of these, and you'll notice that once you input something, and I refresh this report, it no longer displays. So this gives teachers that satisfaction of, of getting it done so they can, they can click through. You could even just hold on your control key, open up a whole slew of tabs, and uh, work through these in a, in a fairly quick manner. And like with the quizzes, you can see, and of course, Tommy made some kind of weird uh, outcome of this. I can give him some kind of no response. I can mark him zero. I don't know what he was writing here. What? No, of course I wouldn't say that. But then I'll see that disappear from the output once I refresh this Grade Everything report page. Just a quick check as I close screen sharing. Any questions so far? Very good. And by the way, this is uh, this is one of my cats who's up running around. Uh, this is Ernie who is trying to go for a ping pong ball. Cat loves ping pong. So what is it like to utilize uh, an ad hoc report? What's a, a simple kind of a workflow? First, you need to install the CF block. I, I love in Moodle that it's become a little bit easier to add in plugins and that even without access to web files, you can do that as a Moodle admin. And you need to actually uh, create a new report, a title it, and then update basic settings like, do you want it to be a global report? Uh, are there, there's some kind of basic restrictions you could add. add. Add a query from the, the ad hoc reports page or another one that somebody at your institution has authored or, or created, and then test the report. Can be that easy. I know that, that uh, some people, when, when you, you put the three letters SQL together, some people will shiver a little bit and, and wonder, if, you know, is this something that, that I can do? Uh, but there definitely is support out there. Uh, even if you just grab one from the ad hoc reports page, put it in, it doesn't quite do what you'd expect it to. Most of the, the Moodlers out there that have helped author those, I think, are, are pretty generous in, in helping say, you know, uh, give you some hint of what's going on or, or post something there to get a hand. Uh, I can definitely at least speak for myself and say, if, if you want to try one of these grading reports, please uh, drop me a line. I'll be happy to, to check it out and, and walk through it with you. You might ask, well, are there some strings attached to this? Uh, What's going to happen if I try this and something doesn't go right, something doesn't work as I would expect it to? There are some contingencies, some uh, different kinds of uh, things that uh, might hold you back initially. So what's going on with some of these dependencies? What uh, do you need to know before you put the Grade Everything report into place? So for instance, this uh, assigned module has some some tricks about it that that make it a little bit uh, of a sticky wicket to, to work with at times. What did I write here? Especially if you use plugins such as the. <laughs> um, I, I've got a lot of this plugin, by the way. If you haven't tried out Poodle, I would uh, highly encourage you to. You can record MP3s. How wonderful is that? So. I'd be curious if, if anybody would pipe up in the chat if you've tried to concatenate a URL link for assign or, or if you've just uh, dug into the assign module much, but this has been uh, a bit of a, a trick for us so far. Um, with a lot of different activities, it's pretty easy to create uh, a URL string, just basically a you know web link that you could put into 
uh, the output of a query and have it work pretty well. But with a sign, it's not so easy because in that whole smushed together link, you've got some variables such as this row num that's not something that exists in the Moodle database. And because that is, and because of that logic, it makes it a little bit tricky to work with. So what, what am I talking about? I know this sounds kind of like a, a funny uh, variable, <laughs> uh, but the row num is something that looks like this here in the URL string. Here's an example. So this is what you'd find when you'd click on that, that pencil icon to, to grade it in an assigned uh, activity. And basically what this is, is when you, you're viewing uh, a, the list of all the people that have, have submitted an, an, an assign activity, that's the, the order in which they, they populate in that table on that, that uh, Moodle page. So there's a few different ways you could work with this. Either you could, you could emulate that sort that, that Ronum is using, or you could avoid using it entirely, work around it by using uh, some alternative logic. So what's the difference of, of doing that? When you're emulating the Ronum sort, you have to create recreate that sort order. And that's kind of tricky. And then there's other dependencies, like you can't allow your teaching faculty to sort uh, that page. Otherwise, there's unintended consequences that can be bad and you grade the wrong person or something that's not so good. Alternatively, you can use alternative logic. You do have to be able to, to change the, that core plugin a bit, have access to web files, and be able to put that, that logic in place. I know that can be a little bit trickier if you have uh, a middle host who is a little bit more guarded about uh, changes to core. Um, but there's, there's one way or another you can work around that. And uh, I, would, I would have a discussion with your Moodle host or your Moodle admin and see what you can do. Here's what the URL string looks like if you can. This makes it a lot easier. This is what we use currently right now. And there's, there's fewer little quirks and hiccups with that once you get that alternative logic in. So that sounds great. <laughs> So I explained a little bit about uh, how you need to be either hosting your own Moodle instance or um, have some help, some allowance to be able to do that with your Moodle host. But definitely once you can do this and then you can just um, control and click a, open a whole bunch of different uh, assign uh, activities to grade, that can make it really nice for your teachers and make it much more efficient. There, there is a dependency the way that I set up the, the report for the quiz module but I really like this. There's something called the manual grading by student plugin that makes it, I'm not sure if any of you have, uh, or teachers have worked with your teaching faculty. Uh, inherently in Moodle, there's the ability to grade all of a uh, single essay response at once. But this module makes it so, or this uh, manual grading by student plugin makes it so you can grade all of the essay responses for a single student at once. It's really kind of nice. So it, even if uh, you don't jump into uh, configure reports block and, and putting this, uh, this kind of query that I've shared in the ad hoc page yet, I would definitely look into this. It's really nice to be able to grade all the essay responses for a student at once. What does this look like? We looked at this a little bit already uh, for the essay response that Tommy Test had submitted in my production site. Um, and as you can see, uh, this blurred out student has submitted an essay response to this question five. A teacher could comment and, um, and clear that off the report. So what is it like to create a filter? Now, in, uh, just in sequence, it's pretty easy. Uh, you have to add a filter selection, add some specific SQL filter code to the query, and then try it out. One thing that has made that a lot easier, um, since it didn't, it doesn't show this in the plugin page for the configurable reports plugin. So if you check out this link, I included this in resources in the, uh, the iMood course. There's a, a nice list that somebody has put out there in the wild of how uh, different plugin, uh, the different filters you can use. What is it? The different uh, filters and the different variables. 
So here's a little bit of what it looks like and how you'd add that filter. First, you click on the filters tab. And here are a couple common filters you could, you could try out. Uh, courses and an enrolled course students filter. And then here's the part where you have to add some code to the SQL. You've got these percentage signs you'd add uh, for and after of uh, each of those. You also have to identify which variable you're going to filter. So in this case, I've indicated um, the, the course table ID and the user's table ID here. So this is just the, the short uh, version of, of each of those tables. So what does it look like? So the, the output when you use uh, the filters like that gives you a drop down so you could choose a course. If you're looking at a site context, then you want to be able to then specify a course. You could click course in the drop down. And then you could also select a, a student in the drop down if you wanted to even drill down to the student level using that filter. So I don't know, uh, it's, it's the middle of the day for you guys. I, I might be ready kind of for a stretch break right now. This is my, my cat, Ernie. But I just wanted to give you the opportunity for, for questions, uh, a short break if, if you want to uh, uh, speak up, if you have a question so far about any of the, the thoughts I've shared or some different things. Or if you have any pictures of your cats. I don't know. I'm a cat guy, as you can tell. And apparently, I only have orange cats. I have two, I have two orange cats, and they get along great. Thank you for posting some questions. Yeah, uh, what, what I can imagine, though I haven't done this, Eric, too, if you were only looking for a count of forum responses, uh, there may be something out there already for that that uh, very likely there could be. But you could easily, instead of uh, showing a candidate link of, of going to grade it, you could even just like, put an account. It'd be very interesting, I, I suppose. Some people might like to see uh, how uh, well chatted a course is, how many people are replying to posts. That is a good question. Thank you, Russell. Uh, I haven't delved much into the, the formatting and, and uh, using the, the template tab in the configurable reports. If any of you guys have done that, I would love to hear what you've done with that, uh, like making a kind of pie line or, or other kinds of charts or graphs uh, with the output of the queries too. I have not dug into that much. So please uh, 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 take a minute to after the session or, or if you're just kind of sidebarring a little bit, go on and share some of that in, the, in one of the, the forums in the iMood course for this. If you, Al, if you'd like to take a look after uh, this session, Al, or at another time, please uh, hit me up, and I'd, I'd be interested to check out tweaking uh, the ungraded reports across the category. And Tabitha, date distribution of their forum posts. Um, I'm not sure uh, exactly what you mean, other than uh, I do commonly show the date submitted uh, in each of, of the ungraded uh, reports that I made. Gotcha, just to see like a variance of, of time, see when, when different things have been submitted. Very good. Thank you all for, uh, for chiming in so quickly. So one of the great things about this block also is that you can grant permission to various roles or a specific user. Uh, so it's really nice to be able to do that. So here are some different ideas of uh, different kinds of faculty and roles that you could grant permissions to based on a role. Very nice to be able to share these to role. And here's how you could do that. Uh, I would first add a permission type, then 
uh, filter by that role, try it out. Here's a quick overview of how you do that. And the permissions tab, you could choose uh, one of the following in a drop down. For this example, I choose the, the user with the selected role. That's how you could specify based on role. I also really like choosing a uh, user field value. Then you could, like if you're user 35, you could say, and that's Bill, I could say, okay, Bill's 35, um, choose user field value and put that in. For the one with the selected role, and then in this drop down, you'll see all the roles that you have available within your Moodle installation. Uh, we have uh, more than this at this time, but the editing teacher is a common one, which is really nice when you want, uh, say, just the editing teacher of a course to have access uh, to that report. So then for other roles, they won't see that report. Mm -hmm. And uh, at later times, and I'm going to show you some ideas about a future report, I'm very interested in, in getting uh, student dashboard report in, in which case I would specify it just to be visible to the student. There's also con uh, contextual filters you have to put in the SQL as well. But what this does by adding this kind of filter, it makes it just available to that role so other people, they don't have to see it or they shouldn't have access to it. For a lot of my staff, just not that one staff needs to or doesn't need to see it. Sometimes it's not privy to information like that, but it just becomes white noise if they see too many reports. So this is just kind of a little bit of a, a silly output that uh, just to show you that, yes, only uh, that one particular role would be able to see that. And just like I posted that link in the chat, that's that same uh, link. I would encourage you to check that out. You could find more filters uh, at that spot. This is just a silly little uh, kind of reminder if, if you're tired and uh, I've, I've had my tea so far tonight, I kind of drink tea all day. Um, you might blink a lot. I know that I do. I can't keep my eyes open for pictures. So here's a little bit about this report uh, that I'd like to just kind of get some of your feedback on. This is something that I've been thinking about doing. I haven't quite fully realized yet. But I really want to get a student dashboard view in our Moodle and be able to use the configurable reports block for that. I may end up using something else, but it's very possible I, I could use this. So um, like this, I kind of maybe want to use this as a, a way to spur on you to think about what kind of reports might you be interested in using at your institution. So at, at Blue Sky, we've uh, used this student dashboard in SIS. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment. But we'd really like to think about putting it in our, our Moodle LMS so that, that way the students have more of a one-stop shop kind of a deal. We'd like to lessen the dependency on students and parents navigating to the SIS so they just go to Moodle. This is what it currently looks like in our SIS. And we like this a lot. I'll explain a few of these columns so you have an idea of what you're looking at too. You can see uh, this is this is the grade output and, and this is actually like a little, the very, uh, the, the parent caddy, the, the bottom total or tally you see uh, for grade aggregation in your Moodle. So at the end of a, a term, the student would not be passing their life skills course. The quality grade is something we can figure in Moodle or we have logic for this in our SIS2. It's basically saying this student is performing on the 17 activities that they've submitted. Uh, he has an average of 86% on those activities. So he's getting an average of a B on the work he's turning in, which is great. He's just behind. So uh, John Smith, you really need to get your work in. Um, the duration is just the length of his enrollment. This progress is how many activities turned in out of the total number of expected activities. This to do is a unique value for us that is showing that's how many activities John Smith has to do this week since we have a, uh, being an online school and having a unique kind of expectation for attendance, we take attendance in the span of a week. So in a week, John has 17 activities to do. This is something get, that gets recalculated each week. So this week, John has 17. If he doesn't do any work this week, it'll be a greater number next week. So far, he hasn't completed any activities in life skills. Both these to do and, and completed are figures that are based on this week, like it says above this bracket. So I've already created a lot of preliminary, uh, laid some groundwork for a query for this in Moodle, for the configurable reports block. There's still a few missing pieces, 
but you can see I've got my my grade, the expected here's the life skills sorted a little bit differently at second line, second row. But I don't have to do, so I'm still missing a little bit, and that mostly has to do with the fact that we don't currently have start and end dates uh, present in our Moodle data. So that's something we might look at, at bringing over with uh, updating our integration and what uh, data is trafficking from our SIS over to Moodle. But uh, especially since we have a lot of rolling enrollment, students coming and going at different times, um, we very well likely will bring that data over to our Moodle so we can see in Moodle as well as the student information system when students are beginning a course and ending a course for more analytics within our, our Moodle LMS. So there's a lot of other reports we've made. Thanks, so I want to uh, catch Tabitha's this comment first. Good question, Tabitha. That, uh, the to-do column is not something that teachers have to enter. Thank goodness. Uh, that's some piece of logic that is, is present in our SIS that I've, I've helped author to see that, OK, we want it to work like this. It's something that's figured. It's logic that doesn't require the teacher to enter anything. I want to make sure to, to well answer your question. The student dashboard with half the data could confuse the students. Right. Um, we would only put put that dashboard in once we have, have compiled all the data that's required. I wouldn't show X's. I only showed X's for the sake of this presentation just to give you an idea that I haven't quite figured in everything yet. So it's not ready for deployment. It's not something I'm ready to, to share with students at this time. But we do have that uh, that as the, the little bit more colorful one with the, the bar I have present in our SIS at this time. And the students do like that, except we have some students that kind of skip over the SIS and just log into Moodle, and then they don't see the dashboard that much. Another reason why we'd really like to have that dashboard viewable in Moodle, where they're always going to be going to, versus uh, a, CMS, a, a website that uh, they might just skip over so there's some other reports that we've authored too. Uh, I'm not sure if any of these are interesting to you. Please chime in and say something in the chat if, if you'd like to hear more about this or like to um, strike up a conversation later about this. Some we've made um, are activities that count for attendance. Since we have a unique attendance model, uh, we actually take attendance based on how many activities students have submitted. So I could look in Moodle and say, what activities uh, has this particular student submitted this week that count for attendance? And look at that. Uh, we are, have uh, data, uh, other logic that automatically spits that out into our SIS, but I'll use that in our Moodle to, to do some double checking. That is a great suggestion, Stuart. Um, and the only reason that I wouldn't consider at that time is we don't have full buy-in uh, with all of our teaching staff using completion tracking. Some do, but not everybody. I like that idea, though. Um, it's very nice to be able to use uh, configure reports to check for uh, correcting errors or maybe something that was missed by teaching faculty just to make sure everybody's on the ball. And sometimes they might miss something like uh, activity that's hidden for one reason or another that shouldn't be. Uh, I, I've heard of other people that have created reports to check for things that uh, have extra credit in the title of the activity but aren't marked as extra credit. Other times, uh, for truancy in the United States, we, uh, we look for, for truant students up through the age of 17. I don't know how that's different in other countries. Uh, but with, uh, well, I'll sometimes find Moodle logins by date for some uh, different locales that will only accept uh, truancy information based on uh, login attempts. I also look for the absence of profile info. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, a great kind of SMS hookup like uh, there's like a BB Connect text or something that right now is only available in the UK and, and some of the locales. Unfortunately, it's not available in the US. So we set up uh, uh, an SMS gateway plugin. There's like a quick mail block that was formatted maybe by Louisiana State, somewhere like that. So that it's like a, a quick mail SMS plugin where as long as you put uh, some uh, a mobile number that's set up as SMS gateway with that like at such and such like at vtext.com suffix. It'll work to send a, a text to 
uh, from Moodle, which is great. So our, our teaching faculty can text our students. However, it won't work if there's no mobile number listed in their profile. So I have a check for that. We'll uh, also make sure that uh, for our Collaborate Meeting tool, we use uh, some weird quirk of that is that it, if you update the name of a session title that you've already created for the Collaborate Meeting tool, then it won't update in the grade items table. So I've created an, uh, an insert query after I lessen the dependency in the configure reports block to allow for update and insert queries. I was able to, to do that. And one other one that was, was pretty useful, especially uh, before creating the, the new grading report uh, that I had shared earlier, I had set up to look for ungraded drafted assignments. And that was a little bit of a, a miss on the part of some of the the grading blocks at that time that were just seeming to miss a number of different uh, points with the, the assigned module where they just weren't, weren't catching some things. Like the FN uh, grading block was great for us for a while. We found that even that was missing some of the, uh, the different assign activity outcomes. So I know that uh, making these reports can often end in error if, if you uh, make something that isn't uh, uh, well set up, uh, or even just making something that isn't you know, well utilized and targeting the right data. So it's a creative process. Um, you can't be afraid to make mistakes. I know I make plenty of them. And uh, I kind of pride myself on being able to make mistakes. And you know, it, it always ends up leading to, to some, some place where you, you learn something even out of your mistakes. And I, I like that. It's, it's good to not be afraid to make mistakes. So here's a resource list of some of the different things. I also put these in the, the iMOOC course if you want to check them out. I can't stress this enough. Take a few minutes uh, if this interests you, if you even if you've already uh, added the configurable reports block or do please add it soon. Check out this page. I've, uh, we're currently on Moodle 2.7 and that's why I listed this one. That's where my teacher grading reports are now. We're looking to go to 2.9. Really like to go to 3.0, well, we'll see. But I know we're gonna upgrade this summer. Um, check out these different ones if you're interested in adding the, the teacher grading reports I've added. I would definitely consider uh, looking at this. And just want to make sure to, to give credit to all these uh, great people like Dom and Priya and uh, much thanks to Wendy who helped uh, set up and coordinate a lot of the presentations. You guys are doing an awesome job. It's so amazing to see what you're able to do to bring all these different people and you all together. This is just so awesome to be able to meet all you guys. I, I would never have any contact with you otherwise. So it's, uh, it's pretty neat to, uh, to be able to to chat with you and have this privilege and randomly share about things like my cat because I'm pretty shameless and I think cats are cool. Why not? I'm curious. I'm going to stick around. I'm not heading anywhere. I'm not going to bed anytime soon. So <laughs> if you guys have any questions, uh, please uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking. You bet, Russell. Are any of you guys guys uh, up late in the U.S. or have we have we got anybody from the U.S. here tonight? All right. Any questions, guys? If you're shy, you can always put something in in one of the forums in the the IMU course too. Thanks, Tabitha. Appreciate your comments. All right, I think we'll finish up the session. Thank you, Ben, for an informative presentation. Your delivery was so engaging. And listeners, thank you for making it a very interactive session. And I'll just, you are all welcome to stay in the room. I'll just turn off the recording and I'll move on to the next session. Thanks again, Ben. Thank you very much, Priya. Appreciate it.